welcome to King County at your service. I'm Jackie Ablau. The pandemic has put a lot of folks in King County out of work, but fortunately, there are many organizations helping out. Fair Start is delivering hundreds of meals every week. Fair Start has existed in the community for nearly 30 years, providing job training for adults and youth who have experienced um, homelessness and other barriers to employment. But since the COVID crisis, we've really had to shift. We've provided hundreds of thousands of meals into the community to places like emergency shelters, which have had to expand because of the COVID crisis. We are serving the King County quarantine sites. We are serving low-income families at the Seattle Public School sites, a third meal. Uh, we're working with low-income seniors, uh, really those who um, are most vulnerable and need these meals the most. A lot of conversation was uh, going on at the county about opening the uh, quarantine sites. We were able to really act on that quickly, um, and I give all the credit to folks like Chef Wayne and the staff here who really pulled it all together. Our team is like just cranking out meals every day. It's, it's pretty amazing, you know, how resilient they've been able to be. We are producing between 7,000, 11,000 meals a day. This really has been a community effort, at, you know, from the county to the city to just community members. It's, it's great because of the, the staff and the, the chefs and the team, how Fair Start just pivot on a dime to start putting these meals out. But to go by each team member and look them in the eye and say, you did it, thank you for being here. I don't know how much longer this is gonna last, but we're gonna get through this. That's rewarding. Debbie, good to talk to you again. It's been a while since I last visited the uh, food bank. How old is the Auburn Food Bank? Their roots go back to 1930, uh, when a family here in town had a home burned out, and the uh, neighborhood came together and decided that they were going to try to help them reestablish. And out of that process became the Auburn uh, Treasure Chest years ago. In 1955, we became a legal entity where we registered with the state and became a United Way partner. We were visiting together just a few months ago. How many people and families were you serving a day then and how many families are you now serving a day? So we were at about 125 and we're now sitting more like at 175 um, every day. Uh, we've, we've dispersed some of that where we're helping our um, senior center go out into the um, uh, into the apartment complexes that are senior complexes and encouraging all of our senior population to stay home uh, we'll bring the food to you what our biggest challenge has been has been uh, the brand new families that have never had to come ask before we would see five a week and now we're seeing like 20 a day it's always hard when i see young people come in. The very, I think it was the second day in, here stood a young man that was my son's age and um, went to school with my son. And here he was standing in our lobby and I recognized him right away. And that, that hit home, you know, that's, that's family right there. He's been a hardworking kid and a hard, you know, had a good job. And uh, to lose that and have to stand in here and, and he's crying, you know, I don't want to be here. I don't want to have to do this. I'm so embarrassed. But um, I'm grateful I did know him. I'm grateful I was able to hug him and tell him it's okay and, uh, you know, not to be ashamed of this. It's just what it is right now. I think we keep hoping that, and the families obviously say this all the time, once I get back to work, I won't have to be back. You know, I won't have to come and ask anymore. This is not a shameful thing to do. It is life right now. It's a problem right now. It's a, it hurts you to have to do this, but don't. Don't do that. Don't think that way. Even though my goal really would be in some 
day to work ourselves out of a job so nobody ever had to do this again, um, right now that's not where it's at. So come and let me help. Let us help you. Debbie, you are the glue that holds the operation together. Uh, that story about the young man who was a classmate of your son tells it all. I've been in the back room. I've been in the front room. You're the glue that holds that community together. And I want to thank you very much for participating in this discussion today. Thank you. I love my town. <laughs> and you're maintaining the legacy of Auburn, which is neighbor helping neighbor. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. During a pandemic, our neighbors experiencing homelessness are the most vulnerable, but a modular shelter in the Inner Lake neighborhood is designed to help. There'll be 45 people that'll be living here. In the, the units, there's five spots for folks to live where they'll be able to stay. Um, the staff and the, the common area that's here will be there to support folks. So people will be working with case managers to try to help them move into housing. Um, there'll be food here, there'll be behavioral health services, there'll be uh, health care services. Um, there'll be staff that care about them and work with them to help get them stable here, but primarily to work with them to move into permanent housing. So the folks who will be coming here initially are coming from a uh, congregate shelter and they happen to be among those who are sheltered, the homeless folks who are sheltered, uh, among the most vulnerable, people who are older, who have underlying health conditions. This is an opportunity to get people to a much, much safer environment. This place was set up so that there's individual bathrooms and showers. Also just the, the spreading out of the facility, which you can see there's common spaces, there's space for folks to go. And we're going to stagger the, the, the services that are provided. So we'll stagger the serving of meals and the counseling sessions and the access to things like the laundry and the showers so that we can protect everyone. I want to let you know as well that pets are welcome here. You've passed an area over here that you can see it has uh, wood chips or bark on the ground. That is the dog run for folks who are staying here who have pets. The idea of modulars just made a lot of sense. They're more nimble, flexible, we can move them. So it's a great, great time today to see it all happening. It's an, a great opportunity for us because we're able to use this site that the county owns. And when eventually we need to develop this site, put it to another purpose, we can pick up these structures and relocate them to another piece of available land and continue our work. The more we can do to help, anybody the more we can do that we help ourselves. Just at the next level of what we'd hope to do in 24-7 shelter you know in King County in Seattle. The TPR program transports individuals from uh, clinics, from hospitals, to isolation and quarantine or other public health sites. We're transporting the community. If they cannot drive to a quarantine zone or hospital or wherever they need to go get tested, um, we're providing that service for them. We have taken a number of these vehicles uh, and created isolated driver cabins uh, to protect the driver as well as protect the passenger. As soon as that customer is picked up and dropped off at their destination, we come back here to our facility and our team sanitizes the vehicle completely. Ensuring that we transport safely and following all CDC guidelines regarding the pandemic response. The whole community is stepping up, so it, it's just something that I wanted to do. Um, we all have to pull together to try and uh, uh, get rid of this, this virus. In essence, I feel blessed uh, to be doing this. It's a privilege to do it. Keep ourselves safe, but also keep others safe from spreading this, uh, this virus.
Hi, my name is Dave Upthegrove, King County Council Member from South King County. Welcome to Episode 7 of Staying Home with Dobby. The Governor recently noted that the highest concentration of COVID-19 cases are right here in South King County. And the Seattle King County Public Health Department recently released data showing the disproportionate impact this pandemic has on communities of color. With all the events transpiring around the nation right now, issues of race and justice are at the center of our public conversation. And it's my pleasure to welcome a state representative from right here in South King County, State Representative Jesse Johnson. I think the pain of the, the unjust killings and the police brutality and the systemic racism that we're seeing um, only adds to the disproportionate impacts of coronavirus and the pandemic. So to have all of this at once is really weighing heavily on um, the Black, uh, Indigenous, people of color community. And now we have to move to how do we act um, all together? It's going to take all of us, policymakers, activists, healthcare professionals, educators, coming together to um, figure out the next steps and the solutions. Because I, I definitely think our young people are watching us. And so I, I put that on myself and, and other um, people in positions of power to, to act and to respond to this to the best of our ability. Thanks, Jesse. And thanks to all of you for your patience during this pandemic. Let's all recommit ourselves to building a community that is safe and welcoming for all. We all know that staying home is not easy, especially if you need a haircut. But there are some solutions if you're brave enough to get the kids involved. friends welcome to yet another episode of project care it's been about 10 weeks gosh since the pandemic started and uh it's been about i would say 16 weeks since i had a haircut and i know a lot of you are struggling with the same decision how do i cut my hair what do i do and we're gonna try something at home if you've been quarantining or have immediate family member you're around well you guys are all living through this together and you can use a family member to help you out but we're gonna do a little different, you know, usually a spouse or perhaps if you've got a bunch of mirrors and clippers and you do it yourself, that's risky. Uh, I'm gonna try my seven-year-old daughter. We're gonna give her her first chance to cut hair. And we're gonna start right here with daddy's very long haircut. Here with my daughter, Pemberley Jennifer Dunn, and she has volunteered to cut my incredibly obnoxious long hair. Say hi, Pem. Hi. Pam, have you ever cut anybody's hair before? No. No? Is it, do you think you'll do a good job? I have no idea. You know what? We'll give it a shot. What tools do we have here? We have, what are these? Scissors. Okay. And what's this? Clippers. Clippers. Yeah. And, and that's, that's makeup. We probably don't want makeup, huh? So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to cut daddy's hair because daddy needs a haircut real bad. Is this the longest you've ever seen daddy's hair? All right, okay, go for it, go for it. Okay, now get this. Wait, <laughs> little longer, little longer, okay. Okay, and drop it to the ground. I like this one, okay. That's so short. Oh my gosh, a little bit longer. Above my fingers, okay. Doing good, hey. good job. The clippers now. Okay. Okay. You push that forward. Yeah. Use the sides. Do the sides. Wait, wait, wait. Do these. See that stuff between my fingers? Go like this. Yeah. Okay. Now what are you gonna do, Pam? Hair gel. We're gonna style it. Okay, go for it. I'm gonna do this one by one. Rub it between your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna give me a, a like a little? Oh, okay. I'm like making okay. a mohawk. <laughs> Make a mohawk. Make a mohawk for daddy. <laughs> Make a mohawk. Okay. And to the side. To the side. What's this for, Pete? That you put on my head? It's just to get it easier to trim. Okay. Good. Oh, 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 perfect. 
Just leave it like that. Okay. Perfect. You're amazing. Thank you. I think you have a future as a hairdresser. <laughs> so, do you think you want to be a stylist someday? Mm, you did a you know, nice job with daddy's hair, don't you think? I need to understand hair gel because I would have no experience of it because I'm not a boy. Only boys use hair gel. You've still done a better job cutting hair than I, I've ever been able to do. And you did it your first time, you know that? Thanks, Dad. Well, it's all done, you know, we might have missed a couple spots here and there, but um, a couple chunks maybe, but mostly good, and guess what? Best $35 I never spent. So, all you need is your seven-year-old child, and you too can have a haircut. It's all now for Project Care. We'll get back to you at our next episode. Now that's a haircut. Thanks for joining us for King County at your service. Visit us online at kingcounty.gov slash kctv. I'm Jackie O'Blow. See you next time.